Welcome everybody to another episode of Celestia Spotlight, uh, where we hear from the people at the forefront of the modular movement. I'm Nick White, COO of Celestia Labs, and today I'm joined by Ishai, co-founder of Dimension Labs. Uh, Dimension is the home of the roll apps, not roll ups, but roll apps, uh, meaning sort of roll up application specific chains. And they're building a modular settlement layer and RDK, Rollup Development Kit, for Cosmos-based rollups. So we're going to talk about a lot of different stuff, settlement, you know, different rollup frameworks, bridging, all of that fun stuff. Ishai, thanks for coming on. Um, welcome. Thanks a lot, Nick. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, super excited to be here, of course. Uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about Dimension. Let's talk about Celestia. Let's talk about modular blockchains and see if we can get some uh, cool insights. Yeah, sounds good. Um, well, just if I rewind the clock, I remember this is probably over a year ago um, when very few people were talking about modular blockchains and all of a sudden this Twitter account popped up called Dimension and it was saying, you know, oh, we're building a roll-up development kit and we're doing modular blockchains and like totally gung-ho. And uh, internally in Celestia, we're like, oh, who, who are these people? This is so cool. Like, you know, we were stoked to see it because... We internally been talking about the need for like a roll-up development kit and all that, like to make it easier for people to build roll-ups and like also to see you guys just fully embrace modular blockchains at that time when like we were kind of the only people uh, sort of banging the drum uh, just got us really thrilled. So I, I just love to hear about like kind of the, the founding story of, of Dimension and even, you know, how you... Uh, got into blockchains and, and specifically modular blockchains. So let's start there. Definitely. Uh, obviously, credit for you guys. Like, uh, uh, there's a lot of visionaries in Celeste and top notch researchers that influenced Dimension and brought us to it, this paradigm, which, you know, we truly believe like this is the way to go. It's like technically the way to go. Um, Let's go back to, to that tweet and that vision. Like we, uh, as a co-founding team, uh, worked together on some ideas on ZK and uh, like we came to a conclusion that it's not, it's not fun. And it's not kind of working towards where we think uh, we, you know, where we think there's potential. And at the time, like Cosmos was not, not at the time, like since then, like Cosmos was like banging. It was like, it was, it was showing kind of a different vibe, uh, you know, from the other alt L1 scenes. It was, it was, uh, it, it made us curious and it made us feel like, okay, there's, there's an opportunity there kind of to, to bring, uh, a new thing to, to horizontal scaling to, to, to look at it from a different perspective. And, you know, and then we found about, you know, we researched everything and we looked at Celestia as well, because you, you were, as you said, you, you're kind of the pioneers in modular. And we said, oh, this, this makes a lot of sense. This is like traditional web. Like, you know, you don't have like a website with everything, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's divided into a way that you know, the economic units are, are perfected and everything works properly. And from there, you know, the, we we're kind of noobs in, in Cosmos SDK. We didn't understand a lot, like, but we had this vision of what needs to be done. We had this vision of where dimension is the product market fit uh, in terms of like settlement, in terms of, you know, even, even considering Celestia, like what Celestia's core offering is and what dimension can bring to the table and what is dimension uh, generally. Um, so we kind of, you know, we had some research, we had some POCs and we understand, okay, this is, this is something that is doable. This is something that we can pragmatic, that we can build this, we can take our product capabilities and we can bring something to the table that, you know, changes the whole, the whole scene. This is something, this is a different ball game because we're taking Cosmos into like a, like imagine in a different dimension. And this is kind of, um, the, the game in a different dimension blockchains are not blockchains they're rollups but the more we kind of got into it we understand like the like rollups are blockchains but it's 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 it was very interesting to see like how we can elegantly assemble and restack 
the cosmos, uh, the cosmos and modular stack and come up with something so powerful. And in my opinion, just substantially better. Like it's, it's, I remember talking to people and they asked like, okay, what, why is this better? And I was like, I hate to be cocky, but it's just, it's better <laughs> that, you know, it's better. You have the, the capabilities of deploying a chain is like deploying a server. And now you can have this, you can have value coming to your, you know, to your decentralized business or to your distributed economy the way it should be. And from scale, yeah, obviously a lot of people talk about scale. There's like there's infinite people who would tell you about TPS and yada, 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 but it's obviously that's also being taken care of and latency is ultra low and everything works better because there is no consensus on the rollup uh, level. Um, and security is higher. So there's like, there's so much advantages. So it was like a no brainer. And for us, it's okay, we're going for this all the way. We're just heading and we're building this and it doesn't matter. And we just learned along the way what needs to be done. And we got uh, to the point where, you know, we understand how it works and we released GitHub, we released our documentation. Um, you know, we can we can show that people can build a rollup right now and it's super flexible. You can put, you know, there's a lot of stuff that the Cosmos ecosystem has kind of, uh, you know, is, is brought to the table for us. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, you can choose your VM. This is stuff that we didn't, you know, we didn't work on and we should thank the people that work on, on, on these materials, but it just, it brings the offering of dimension into a different level. And it, it, it truly is a different level. You can go ahead right now, you can play with the docs, you can see that you can deploy a very, very uh, high performance rollup with EVM, with Cosmosm, soon with other VMs. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just super exciting. Yeah, wonderful. Um, well, well, everything that you're saying to me, I mean, makes so much sense because, uh, you know, actually resonates a lot with what I believe in, which is, you know, at, at Cosmoverse last year, I talked about the, the internet of modular blockchains, which is basically that, you know, in order to achieve the full vision of the Cosmos ecosystem, uh, we have to take the Cosmos stack modular, you know, and that's basically exactly what you guys are doing. Um, you're kind of like taking a lot of the abstractions and the tools that were built, but adapting them to this new framework that um, adds in a lot of the components that the original uh, Cosmos stack is missing. Like it's it's so much overhead to launch a new Cosmos zone. You don't have a secure way of bridging between the chains, but in a modular stack with dimension, um, you you can get that. And and I also do want to reemphasize as you did that this is all happening because we're building on the shoulders of giants. Where I honestly I think the Cosmos community, uh, developer community is like one of the strongest and best in the space. And and the the founders and leaders are just visionaries who came up with like kind of the, the precursor to modular blockchains, which is like, you know, modularizing the software stack of blockchains and things like, uh, you know, it, these interchain standards like IBC that I think are going to, you know, continue to be state of the art and like foundational kind of um, components of, of the modular blockchain stack going forward. But so anyway, yeah, you, you guys are kind of taking the Co taking Cosmos modular is, is one way that I like to think about it. So maybe let's go a little bit deeper into like specifically what what is Dimension made out of? You mentioned there's a settlement layer. You know, you did mention that there's also a, a roll up uh, SDK. So let's like tell me more about those things. Like what do they actually look like under the hood? So let's let's talk about the the roll up SDK. We love to call it the RDK. Uh, just fun to, to, to say the RDK. Um, so there's a difference between a rollup and the chain in, in several uh, roles, I would say. So in, in the blockchain, of the validator set is kind of like, I like, to I like to talk in metaphors, by the way, so I hope that's fine. Uh, the validator set is, is also, it's also the parliament that represents the people, but it's also the government that takes action. So in the RDK, it's different. It's 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 partitioned into two. There's one role that takes care of the government, basically the operating uh, uh, sequencer, or the operating uh, business entity. It's the sequencer, 
And for the RDK, we have uh, something that's called the dividend uh, parameter that says how much are you willing to, as a sequencer, to give out to the community. And governance is uh, governed by, no, but not the validators, by different uh, beings, I would say. I don't want to uh, spoil, but there's a lot of cool stuff that we're building. Um, but it's, it's different. So there's like two houses in, in, in uh, a role app. Um, but the RDK itself is just, it's based on the Cosmos SDK. Like you said, uh, uh, we're building on this great technology that other people build and open source. And we're very grateful for that. And we can give our, um, you know, flavor of, 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 uh, of building blockchains, uh, by using it and, uh, by leveraging the code base that was already there. Um, we just look at it from a different angle and we think, what can we do better? And this is why dimension is dimension. We really look at the most pragmatic way of deploying a blockchain of getting to the performance that you need and actually looking at it from a pragmatic way of, you know, the things that people want when they deploy a blockchain, like liquidity, they want security out the box. They want liquidity. They want, they want to choose their VM. This is what people need, like in terms of not just bullshitting with all these, you know, the crypto regular stuff, narratives, you know, TPS stuff and stuff like that. That's bullshit. Just like, what do developers really want? They just want like easy way, in my opinion, and other people on my team could even argue different. But in my opinion, like there's people want the flexibility. They want the ease of use. They want this one click, uh, blockchain deployment that is secure, that is liquid. And this is what I believe the next phase for blockchain and what brings us towards hopefully like a, ne a next bull run because we can deploy like a thousand of these instances which are secure, which have li liquidity and could operate like as a modular internet of no value. Um, and this is where like Celestia and Dimension really combine the vision and you know, each one is working on it's specific core forte, specific like core offering that they specialize in and kind of vision their way. And, uh, and, and by building this together, it's, it's, it's like creating uh, a modular internet of value, which we hope you, myself, obviously a lot of people in the crypto community uh, will bring innovation and real use cases and, and uh, innovative products. Yeah. You, you said it really well. Um, and, and that's kind of why the modular flag is, you know, modularism, not maximalism. Like rather in, in, a, in, a, in a monolithic world, you know, each project kind of has to do everything on its own and bootstrap its own ecosystem and think about every solving every, every problem and tying it all together. And the beauty of a modular ecosystem is that, you know, Celestia can just focus on providing the best consensus and DA layer and then you know, projects like Dimension can focus on the the actual execution layer, the settlement part of it, and tie those all together, add liquidity, and and make it as easy as possible for for those users that want to deploy a blockchain with uh, with one click. So, totally uh, on board with that, and and stoked that uh, we we're getting to work together on this because like there's no way that Celestia could solve all these problems, uh, you know, uh, on its own. And, uh, and sorry, there's so much okay. problems, even for Celestia itself and even for Dimension itself. It's like building these distributed systems is something that, okay, you think, you know, for me, I'm not a huge Twitter guy, but I'm always looking at like people arguing on Twitter. And then I'm, I'm seeing like, there's a lot of problems that you're, you're getting there always. You're always on research. It's, it's a new paradigm. It's a new thing. Uh, and, and this is exactly what you said, like, focusing on creating the best core offering, like specific concentrated core offering uh, that Celestia Dimension or other players in the in modular ecosystem do is what gives us value, right? what builds like a, a, a full ecosystem that is that each one of the particles, each one of the components is valuable. And this is just like web two technology. It's not, it's not different. It's this, you know, a lot of people, and I, I know like Celestia folks, I, I guess you probably don't like this metaphor, but for me, it's, it's just the same as front end, back end and database. That's it. There's like front end. It's like the execution layer where 
you as a consumer, as a client, you're facing. This is the UX that you get. This is what you feel, right? On the back end, there's like a settlement layer like that basically takes care of everything, that everything works. Like the, the front end, you know, talks to her, like the, it, it, it updates her, it or her, whatever. Um, and there's there's a scalable database that provides the capability of creating, of distributing data uh, without centralizing it. Um, and this is Celestia and, you know, people are, you know, and I, I read a tweet by, um, by Mustafa that he said, like, we should change like data availability name. Like we should think about like the name. And I have a proposal for you right now. You should call it data scaling. It's a data scaling layer. It's, it's data availability is a problem like of, of data withholding attack, but Celestia is about scaling data. It's not about the specific edge case that is within the data withholding attack, but you know, that's just my input. But the way I think that people should look at modular blockchains is data, backend, frontend, that's it. Mm -hmm. No, uh, we were a big fan of analogies because, um, you know, frankly, the, the technology is so confusing that like you need to relate it to something else to make it understandable and legible. Um, and I, I like, I like analogizing it to web two stacks. So I, I really love that. And like, you know, the way that I think about it a lot is that, um, you know, modular blockchains are more like cloud computing in that, um, you know, <clears throat> you have infrastructure providers like AWS or Azure or what have you, and they just provide like the raw compute resource. And then it's developers that come and deploy the, whatever virtual machines they need, or whatever servers they need to run their web application. And I think that that's, that's kind of what's happening in modular blockchains. We have these really scalable sort of like economy of scale type, uh, you know, systems like Celestia that just provide raw data availability and consensus. And then these developers come on and deploy the blockchain like computer that they need. And so like, yeah, th th these analogies I think are like super valuable. Um, I like the database one. Uh, and I, I the da data scale. I actually, I, did, I, I didn't, I didn't think that you, you like it. Like I, I, this, it's not completely accurate, right? It's not, there's so much more to it, but you, you can't, you can't, you know, people, not everybody has, you know, the, the uh, you know, the capabilities of understanding uh, every problem that distributed systems have, but you need to, to give them and you need to, you know, bring it to them in a way that we can understand, we can talk. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. I mean, no, no analogy is ever perfect. And that's why, you know, people who are super technical like Mustafa often, they always, he always has a nitpick with, with every analogy that we use, but I'm like the big picture guy and I'm always like, oh, you know what, we just have to like, it's useful, even if it's not perfectly accurate. Um, but uh, back to back to dimension, right? So the people listening, they want to know more about dimension specifically and, and sort of how it works under the hood and, and like what the vision is. So I, I want to dial into specifically like the, the settlement hub of dimension and first, like what, what is its purpose? What does it function and, and how does it work? And like, why do you think that this is a key component to sort of the, the, the end vision of like modularizing the Cosmos stack? Um, sure, sure. Um, so that mentioned to kind of simplify, try to, I'm trying to simplify, simplify everything. That mentioned is an app chain, which the application of, of the app chain of this Cosmos SDK chain, which uses Tenderman, is to support rollup. Roll apps, they work in a different manner. They have different, they don't, they don't use Tendermint. They use uh, Diamond, which is actually a rollment fork. Uh, but it, it's a consensusless client. So it's, there's no consensus. It actually delegates uh, consensus to the Dimension Hub, which is a Cosmos SDK chain, built specifically to, to take this consent, to basically to power these roll apps. I like to think about it as this is kind of, you know, you as a rollup, you connect into the dimension hub. This is the architecture. Uh, it's built into the rails. So it's not like on the smart contract layer. Uh, 
let's let's take a look at Ethereum for example. If you want to build a rollup on top of Ethereum, you would go to the smart contract layer. You would design how that would work, and you would uh, update this uh, update this smart contract on Ethereum. Dimension works on the chain itself. Uh, it's it's calculated. It's built to support these rollups into the rails. It's baked into the logic, um, and and this is what makes it super special that. The consensus itself is to support rollups, right? So let's take let's take a scenario where, uh, God forbid, Arbitrum or Optimism, they you know, the the bridge rollup, uh, the bridge smart contract gets hacked. Ethereum does not, you know, Ethereum just moves on. It doesn't. It's not built. It's a smart contract on Ethereum, and Ethereum can't stop. Like it's not. It's not built for this uh, purpose. But for Dimension, like hacking. Or there's, if there's a problem, the bridge. There's a problem, the whole system. So the whole system is is designed to support rollups um, into the rails itself. I hope that makes sense. Mm. So like, um, if if there is something that goes wrong uh, on a given rollup that's built uh, that's settling to the 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 dimension hub, then there's a way to kind of recover from that without impacting the other rollups. Is that? It's kind of just like in terms of social consensus, like. Every rollup is 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 a similar kind of first class citizen in dimension, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's it's a system that built that's built in the same manner. So there's no there's no difference between like Arbitrum and Optimism implementation. There's everybody is kind of getting this infrastructure uh, from dimension from the dimension hub. So if there's mm -hmm. a problem with one thing, there's like obviously this consensus. Okay, this this whole system is not working properly. Let's fix this. Let's let's you know this is this is our number one goal, and it is to provide rollups with the security and the liquidity that they need. And mm -hmm. it's different than Ethereum. Ethereum obviously is huge inspiration for everybody, but it's not mm -hmm. built specifically uh, to support rollups. Although it's going there, but it's not you know it's not into uh, it's not built specifically for that. Mm. I'm curious, is, is it um, permissionless for, for people to deploy new rollups on Dimension or is there some kind of like governance part? No, this is this is the huge, you know, we're betting in Dimension, we're betting on human ingenuity. We're betting mm -hmm. that if we're making something permissionless, we're going to see some cool shit. We're going to see some cool stuff. People are going to build amazing stuff. Once we put in... Uh, you know, governance, and what, once we put in a permission way, this is it's more similar to Polkadot or uh, a lot of other systems right now. We want to have a permissionless system, and we will have a permissionless system uh, where anybody could deploy a rollup without asking anybody. Um, obviously, to get there, there is kind of a training wheel uh, way, um, and there will be permission rollup at start at the beginning but once we make sure that the system is secure enough it will go permissionless and it's it's an essential part in the dimension vision in the dimension stack um i think in the blockchain ethos as well like in everything like we the governance is 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 something that's pretty cool in cosmos by the way but um but it's it shouldn't be the soul, the, you can't decide who gets to build an application or not. And if you can do that, you know, that's, you, you're missing the place. You're not in the right uh, spot. Mm -hmm. And before we um, hopped on the, the call, I remember we were discussing this all VM thing that you, that you mentioned. Can you give us a little bit of uh, uh, some color on that? Because it sounds like some really interesting technology it could be could unlock, um, you know, true like a universal settlement layer type of thing. So I'd, I'd love to like dive into that a little bit. So this is this is a great way to, to describe a universal settlement uh, thing or for state machines. Uh, so obviously a settlement layer in an optimistic setup needs to emulate the state machine uh, of a rollup that's deployed on top of, of it because it needs to know what happened in, in case of any dispute. It's like, it's the supreme justice, right? It's, it's the court. And if you don't know what happened, you don't have the evidence, you, can, you can't say anything. 
So RVM is a roll-up virtual machine, and what it means is that we emulate the we emulate the state machine. We take the context and the state machine of the roll-up. We emulate this for the disputed transaction, and we conclude: is it is it fraud or is it not? The way we do it is, you know, it's Omri, my co-founder, uh, has a lot of experience in DevOps and, and just, you know, uh, Docker is an emulating environment. And it comes from just taking this experience into, into blockchain. Um, but th essentially, the vision is to emulate like you emulate uh, any, any other virtual machine. You emulate the virtual machine of uh, a roll-up. And uh, you conclude what's the fraud uh, according to it and according to the context that is injected uh, with the fraud proof. Got it. So, uh, and so pe for people who don't, you may not appreciate how cool this is, like one of the challenges of, you know, doing rollups and um, sort of doing settlement is that each rollup will have its own kind of application logic and potentially its own virtual machine, et cetera. And in order to do dispute resolution, you have to know what that logic is typically. And so what that means is like, I mean, one of the whole benefits of the app chain thesis and like roll apps is that every roll app or like application specific chain or roll up has its own execution logic, its own virtual, mach virtual machine. So it's all customized. But then that means that your settlement layer has to know about every single one of these different execution uh sort of frameworks and that can easily it get knows out of hand. nick it knows the hash it knows it knows the specific you know it knows to prove that this state machine is this is what they say it is once they submit the state machine so for example i i would try to create a metaphor it's it's hard but it's like i'm gonna bring a judge a machine i'm gonna bring it to the judge Right. And I'm going to prove to the judge that this was the machine that was used in the crime scene. OK, once you prove it, you say, OK, this is the machine. Now the judge could take the machine, could put in the whatever input it has, see the output. And then it gives the machine back to the to the person and says, OK, thank you. Bye bye. And then it gives it the verdict is done and we continue. But like you said, it's it's really exciting because it really is kind of a breakthrough. And we thought a lot of, a lot about the names. You know, I'm a big name junkie, and I thought like chain and chain, RV. You know, there's a, there's a lot of cool stuff that we thought about this, but um, it's 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 very cool. You know, it's something that we really want to to develop and bring to the you know the first stage of of, of, uh, of production. Or was it all VM? No, it's RVM. RVM. Oh, okay, machine. RVM. Okay, got yeah. got it. Um, yeah, in fact, you know, the way when you're describing it, it sounds a lot like um, um, what they, uh, as I understand, how Polkadot works in that when you are running a parachain, you have like an app hash or like you have a hash of like uh, the, the web, web assembly sort of like logic that the, the that, that like implements the um uh, parachain. So it sounds like there's something similar going on there. And then I know that like the, the, the relay chain nodes, like pull that, uh, they verify that this is the right state machine to be running. And then they like verify the parachain and then like vote or something. So it sounds kind of similar, but like in a, like a much more modular. It the, 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 so it's, it's cool because <clears throat> I see this happening a lot where, um, you know, projects like Polkadot, we're uh, very close to sort of like a modular setup, but they didn't like there weren't yet these abstractions or like the technology like um, data availability sampling or even rollups. So they, they, they couldn't actually go all the way, but they got as close as you could to being fully modular. But uh, they, they kind of had to be stopped short, unfortunately. And, and, and there's so many parallels and a lot of people get confused and they're like, well, isn't Polkadot? modular but the, the the truth is that like when you get down to the brass tacks they're not quite modular so they don't quite have the same sort of scalability and shared security that um you know celestia plus dimension or, or other modular setups have so anyway it's it's cool to, to see 
these these common themes and technologies kind of recurring and being reinvented, uh, but fully modular. So, Definitely. I, you know, I, I'm not a, you know, forgive me, but I'm not a big fan of, of Polkadot, but they like the tech stack is, is amazing. It's uh, sometimes, uh, you know, I'm a product guy and like, I think Dimension, you know, is, is a product first company. And we want to create the most, you know, convenient way for, for anybody to interact with the system. And just because I feel like I don't have a convenient way to interact with Polkadot technology, I may have like a bad impression, but they have some amazing stuff, you know, that they figured out pretty, pretty early in my opinion. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Um, the last thing on, on this point is just like, you know, people also like, I would say that within the modular stack, you know, you have consensus, data availability, execution, and settlement, people tend to get the most confused about the settlement layer for a lot of reasons, because it's kind of, uh, it has lots of different functions. To me, the two primary functions are basically uh, bridging and like, you know, it being able to route liquidity or like message passing essentially in a trust minimized way uh, between rollups. Uh, and, and being like a liquidity hub, right? So that you can um, not have all like tons of different versions of, of assets on different chains, depending on how they've been sort of moved uh, between each other. And you don't have to have like this crazy dense interconnected web of, of bridges. You can just have like a very clean kind of like hub and spoke bridging model. So that's one router. Yeah, exactly. Router, kind of like the original Cosmos hub vision. Um, and then the other one, is dispute resolution, which is where like, in an, and that's specifically for optimistic rollups where you sometimes need, if you have like an interactive verification uh, game that, that you need to run in order to decide which is the valid chain to follow, um, you need a, a place where that game takes place and you can't do it in a peer to peer way. It kind of has to happen on a chain. Um, so those are the two, two main functions. It sounds like the, um, Dimension Hub is bo is doing both of those things essentially. It's meant to be both the dispute resolution layer and a bridging hub and asset asset hub. Is that fair to say? That's definitely fair to say. But I think like from our focus, and 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 this is coming back to what I said, like Dimension is a product first uh, protocol, or or I would say like our target is. We didn't come up like with. We didn't say, okay, we want to do this and we want to do this. No, we just said like, okay, what do people want? Like, what do we, what do they need? Like it, essentially, initially we, we didn't have like liquidity. We said like, there's no smart contract. There's no any activity on the Dimension Hub, no economic activity at all. But then we thought like, okay, you know, developers, builders, they just want liquidity and security. And from that requirements, we kind of came up with the Dimension design. We didn't think we didn't go through the research. Uh, we didn't go through like the blockchain uh, regular route where we, okay, we say, we want to do this. We want to, no, we said like, what's needed? What's needed? And this is needed. This is something that we believe that there is like demand for it. People want to deploy app chains. Deploying an app chain is hard. I know because we're doing it. You know, we're talking to like a, like a thousand validators a day and it's, it's, it's hard. You know, there's a lot of stuff to do. And you know, there's there's amazing cool projects uh, um, that you probably also know uh, that work on creating this roll-up experience where you can deploy it, you can deploy a blockchain uh, easily. And this is how we got to kind of uh, you know to, to the dimension design, not just you know regarding settlement. It's just it grew there because of research of what people want what we think that people want of course we didn't we didn't launch yet so yeah uh i'm glad that you guys are so product oriented because um i think that's something that the space has kind of been lacking there's been a lot of just engineering for engineering's sake or research for research sake like hey this is cool we're solving a problem but we don't we're not actually thinking about the end user um we're just kind of like scratching our own itch in terms of wanting to like uh you know build cool tech and um, I think in order for a blockchain to- And there's a lot of people who, who, who are even not even building. There's just, 
It's, <laughs> That's it, true. There's, there's so much, you know, Dimension is not a marketing firm. Dimension is not about creating, you know, I don't know, the best ambassador program or the best, you know, it's, it's, it's a product first firm. Um, and people, you know, we, after like, you know, the situation with crypto right now, people shouldn't understand like, okay, we're trying to build something that's useful. We're trying to build something that protects people from, you know, events like we've witnessed right now. Uh, we're trying to build a, a really useful economy that's online and that's free. Um, and, and people should not be, you know, people should not look at projects by how good is, you know, the leader or how good is, uh, you know, the, the, the marketing team, people should look at what do they feel could bring value to the ecosystem and even to the world, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that in order for blockchain to go mainstream and to be, you know, uh, adopted widely, like we need product oriented builders. And so again, yeah, just glad that you guys start with that as your North star. Um, so l l we covered the settlement layer and that was extremely interesting. Um, tell me a little bit more about the RDK, the roll of development kit and sort of what is the vision for that and wh where, what's the status of it? Um, and like, what kind of, you mentioned there's a bunch of different execution environments you guys support. Like, let's, let's talk about that. Um, yeah. Give me, give me the lowdown on the RDK. Awesome. So the RDK is, is, is originated from the SDK, but it's, it has a few differences. I mentioned before, uh, that a roll up is not a customer's chain. It has different, uh, just not, it's, it's not that it's not a customer's chain. Actually it is a blockchain, but it has just a, a different tweak to it where the sequencers operate the chain and not the validators. And, uh, we're planning to put in something new that, uh, brings in governance in a different way. I, I don't want to ruin the, the surprise that that's coming. Um, but I, I do want to share that on the RDK, like the Cosmos SDK, you can put in, uh, different VMs like Ethermint, uh, which thanks to the yeah, Evmos team, uh, is built and could support, uh, the EVM and you can put in Cosmosm and hopefully in the future fuel and uh move maybe whatever you can put on the cosmos sdk is 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 relevant for dimension rollups um i would say that in the vision the rdk is kind of a development kit for uh and the centralized on uh decentralized autonomous chain that is kind of a business it's it's more of a business we focus on value accrual we want to say okay a sequencer is an operator it's like the CEO or it's like the company and the token holders are like the shareholders. And there's also like board members. Uh, and this is an online business and we want to create this distributed online business work, uh, without anybody interfering, uh, in the middle and creating this value accrual mechanisms that enable people to, okay, so let's, let's, let's get a community together. Let's build something cool that makes money. Let's work together and let's keep it sustainable. Let's keep this thing running, uh, with its own, uh, shares. I would say like the tokens of, of a roll app, uh, they should accrue value, like everything, every operation in there should accrue value to the token holders. And it's all governed, uh, by them, by the roll app itself. The only thing a roll app needs to do is it needs to get security from base layers like Celeste and like dimension. It gets it gets liquidity as well, but it's it's essentially it's also uh, I hate to say, it, but it is a business. It is some sort of a business. It can run. It can be uh, it can be losing forever. Yeah, it can. It could be a charity. It could be cool, but uh, but it also something. It's also something that people want, and it's a community. It's kind of I would say it's like an economic organism on the internet that doesn't need to have. Um, you know, the overhead of technically building a blockchain, which is hard. We know it's hard. You know, it's hard. I know it's hard, but you know, people that are just, you know, psyched about NFTs and psyched about communities and psyched about games, they don't need to, to, to go into like 
CS, PhD research topics, they don't want to be there. They shouldn't be there. They just need to have a framework where they say, okay, this is, this is some cool thing. This is some cool infrastructure that I can use and I can distribute profits to whoever wanted to, to invest in me. And I can do it fairly in a cryptographically way where I don't scam anyone and everything is, and every, every part of what happens is verifiable and open. And this is the vision that we have for the RDK, for rollups, for, for blockchain. And uh, yeah, I think, I think it's, it's, it's cool and, and we'll get there. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you guys are thinking about, and this is the first time I've heard, um, you know, the, the governance and the economic sustainability of, of the rollups on dimension from the get go. And solving that problem is actually a huge. I, I would also guess from like a user perspective, that's probably one of the things that they think about and, and worry about a lot. Um, and like making sure that the roll ups that are built are, are economically sustainable. Um, and th that's actually, I would say like in terms of marketing, Nick, in terms of like, what is the messaging for people? Why should people build on dimension roll up is value. Like mm -hmm. we provide infrastructure that will enable you to create more value for your token holders, for yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is like the economic one oh one that we have in mind. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, on that point, well, there's two things I want to say to expand on that. One is that um, one of the benefits of a modular blockchain stack is that you don't have to actually pay for your own security. Like when you're running your own blockchain, like a monolithic blockchain, you are really paying for your own security. You have to sort of like, uh, uh, yeah, like you have to pay the validators through inflation staking rewards and stuff like that. And in, in uh, a roll-up modular model, you just pay as you go, as you consume block space, and you benefit from economies of scale. So like you share that cost and it becomes much lower per roll-up than it would be if everyone was their own chain trying to secure itself and run its own infrastructure. Like you share the infrastructure. So anyway, that, that's a huge part. The second thing is in terms of like value capture for roll-ups, one of the things that I'm excited about, and, and maybe this is something you guys are thinking about too, is like, one of the big reasons for a an application to move from a monolithic chain, like let's say I'm a I'm a Dex on Solana or a Dex on Ethereum, uh, is I, I might want to move to my own chain so that I can capture MEV, right? When there is, is like this, <clears throat> there's a lot of value that that people can capture via MEV, like that. If you do it on Ethereum or Solana, it kind of like bleeds down to the layer one. But on a in a modular stack, your roll up can actually capture that if you implement it in the right way. And there's some cool teams thinking about that, like Skip, also very active in the Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, so I don't know if that's something that you guys have thought about, but I, I also see that as a, a really big economic driver for why people would choose to build modular versus monolithic long-term. Of course, it's, you know, you can expect businesses, you know, even if they're decentralized and distributed, to just hand over value and just say, okay, yeah, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm with Ethereum, you know, I like Vitalik. It's, it's, you know, okay, let's, let's just not make money. Let's just not be profitable or economically sustainable. It, it, it's not going to go, it's, it's, it doesn't work like that in my opinion. Um, and I think like we should treat blockchains as kind of distributed companies, uh, essentially in, in the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, like communities with with the financial kind of um, shared goal. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. I love the, the word you said, which is like a an economic organism on the internet. Like that's a really good way to describe what a blockchain is. Um, last thing. Now we like I, I understand now the the settlement layer, the RDK, and that vision. Now I want to zoom out a little bit and, and like understand how does this plug into Celestia and like, why, why did you guys choose to build on Celestia versus, you know, other, other ways of, of that you could build your stack or other DA layers. I'm just curious, um, for, to, to get that picture of this project. I think, I think I started like when we, when we started talking, I told you like Celestia is is a pioneer in, in modular blockchain so um for us modular is about you know focusing on the core offering i think celeste's core offering is data scaling it allows 
thousands, if not you know tens of thousands of rollups to to submit data and to have it uh, distributed in a decentralized way where we can know that everything works properly. And obviously, for that reason, Celeste is the best choice for data. If you would put data on the Dimension Hub, it could fit you know demand of one, two, three, four, five, six rollups. Uh, and once you go further than that, you know you start centralizing. And it starts becoming more hard. Um, so obviously, Celeste is, is, in terms of the tech, is is the best. And uh, you know, as I told, as I said before, like this is this is modular. You want to choose the best um, fitting piece of the puzzle to work with you to get the best product, and that's how it should be. So yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, and and I think that. One of the benefits that Celestia has had is that we have gotten the privilege uh, to start from scratch, you know, with these insights of, of modular stack. Like, it seems like, you know, Ethereum is moving towards a modular model, but they kind of have the baggage of a monolithic L1 to, to sort of deal with and overcome. And I think that yeah. holds them back from going fully modular. And then, you know, even Solana, it seems actually from some of the discussions on Twitter that they're thinking more seriously about you know, light clients and, and all that stuff. But again, there there's so much baggage in the way that they've built that I, I can't really see them ever making the full pivot. Or if they did, they, they might just have to start over um, and sort of scrap. I, I got to be honest with you, Nick. I, I love the Solana guys. I think that they're awesome. I really love, you know, what they're building. They're just builders and they build what they believe in, you know. Even if, you know, there's kind of differences. I love, I love the community and there's, there's huge... Uh, uh, respect for what you know they're going through right now and what they're showing but yeah even even though they're trying to make like uh, the system itself more reliable for end users with die clients and, and stuff like that which is, is great um, but I have a lot of respect for them I, I really like like what what they did what they built it's just inspiring yeah absolutely uh, I I could not agree more I have uh, I, I I think that they the um, sort of the rigor and also the practicality, the pragmatism of their engineering and the roadmap is like pretty exactly. astounding. And 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 like, yeah, I I'm I'm also a fan. Um, anyway, uh, that kind of actually brings me to one like I have some big picture questions to ask you before we sort of like wrap up um, that are sort of more like about the modular space more generally. Like <clears throat> one of the things I want to talk about since you're kind of in the Cosmos ecosystem, you know, there's also a movement in Cosmos for shared security, right? There's this uh, notion of interchain security um, where the hub or another Cosmos zone can actually loan out security to a new chain that wants to spin up. That way they don't actually have to like start up a new uh, whole network from scratch. Um, and there's also this thing called mesh security where, uh, you know, different chains can actually stake their like put take their own stake and put it place it on put it at risk to validate uh, another chain and um, these are both different approaches to shared security but different from the modular approach which is like having a shared consensus and data network like Celestia so I'm curious like what what is your take on those things where do you see them fitting in what are the trade offs um, and yeah tell me tell me about your, yeah. your perspective um, you know. <sighs> First of all, like Cosmos does like what they're trying to do with ICS um, is, is super cool. Um, and they are like kind of OGs where we respect like what they build, which is so amazing. And the tech stack itself is, is amazing. In my opinion, it's not the best way to go. Um, like I don't, I don't, technically I don't see it working well, um, but it, it might work well to like being kind of this, um, place where like 10 or 5 or 15 or something like like a limited amount of chains could kind of incubate that's possible that that, that could be super cool and that could help uh adam and cosmos ecosystem mesh security seems uh very interesting in my opinion um i also see this tech uh working in the dimension ecosystem and kind of bringing rollups to contribute security also through the hub, through the value that they uh, um, get uh, from from what's going on on rollups, 
Um, I, I, I like the approach of mesh security. I think it's, I think it's, uh, pretty pragmatic. It's, it's cool. Um, for ICS, I think it's kind of creating this, uh, um, how do you say it? like an incubator? This is, it's like a, it's like a good incubator. It's not, I wouldn't say it's like a scaling solution. It's more like a, like a, like a place to start like cosmos chains. That, that would be a good definition for, for, from my perspective, but I'm not a huge expert on ICS and, you know, the, the exact differences between the versions and stuff like that and the implementation details. But I, I think that it's, it's a good solution to, to bring in new projects and to kind of give them the Adam love cosmos, uh, uh, hug, and then like free them into, into sovereignty. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. It's kind of like the sandbox, like the incubator for the space. Yeah, I, I've also been right. interested in uh, interchain uh, security because it has the notions of like scheduler and um, even this this way of like sharing MVV. Um, and I even think it can actually be used for like solving decentralized sequencing potentially uh, as like having a shared validator. I want to talk about like... decentralized sequencing. All right, let's Nick, do it. If you don't mind. I want let's to ask do it. you. Yeah. I, like... Okay, so in Dimension, we decentralize the sequencer by just rotating the sequencer. Um, and like, there's the hub, there's, there's a place where you can point at and we can say, okay, this is the sequencer now. And this is like, I, I read a lot about decentralizing sequencer and the challenges, but I, I would love to hear like, what is the real, how do you see the real pinpoint challenge of decentralizing sequencer? Good question. So, well, uh, so for people who are listening, right? So a, a rollup has to have uh, at least one or multiple nodes that end up actually like you know processing the transactions like into blocks and then posting the state updates, and um, and so that's what a sequencer is, and um, ideally the so you don't actually have to rely on the sequencer to do anything correctly because you have fraud proofs or validity proofs that make you able to like verify that the, the, the sequencer is not lying to you at least. However, the sequencer can do certain things like they can censor you or they can just go offline. And that means that all of a sudden you can't really use the rollup. And so you want to have a decentralized sequencer. You, you, you want to have a, you want to have sequencing that provides censorship resistance and, and guarantees some level of liveness so that like, you know, the rollup just doesn't go offline or you don't get, get screwed over. So that's kind of, to me, the goal of decentralized sequencing is, is that. Um, and so obviously if you have one single sequencer, they can do whatever they want. So like if you have uh, multiple of them, that seems like a very easy way of like providing more censorship resistance and more sort of like robust liveness. However, like the, there's so many different ways of like skinning a cat and there could be, there's things like, I don't know, maybe CR lists are a way of like ma ensuring that there's censorship resistance, even if there's only a single sequencer or i don't know maybe there's ways of like <clears throat> economically punishing we, ha we have lots of lying. yeah economically punishing for, for censorship but there's also in dimension stack um you can become a sequencer by yourself you know you don't even have to ask the sequencer you just post you know you just post dime and you get sequencing time according to the dime that you post on the hub mm -hmm. and uh i i think and in that way also mev accrues like down like the more you get profit from this the more profitable this economic organism is the more people will come and say okay i, I want to i want a piece of this business this is a good business yeah. for me to operate uh, i'll i'll join in i'll come in i'll put more and more and more and more and more until you get to this economic equilibrium and uh the roll-up uh lives but uh uh yeah uh, i think i think dimension has a very good strategy for decentralized sequencing um but you know we're all kind of still in the early phases of getting there we're not production ready with this we don't really uh comprehend all the all the problems that may arise mm -hmm. but uh yeah yeah one of the cool things that will come out of um you know various solutions of decentralized sequencing is a like that's the perfect place to capture mev because if you're sequencing all these roll-ups like you are you know deciding the ordering and so you can actually capture mev the other cool thing is that actually as I understand, and I don't fully I haven't like read up on the research on this, but um, you know one of the complaints about 
the modular stack is that you're sh you're doing sharding basically where each roll up is kind of its own uh, computer and they can't actually access each other they can't like you can't have composability basically or atomicity between these roll ups and i mean obviously you you can still do cross chain communication it can be tr trust minimized but you have to wait one block time basically at minimum but uh, supposedly with uh, if two roll ups share a sequencer set or there's some kind of way for those sequencers to coordinate with each other, you can actually have cross-chain atomicity. Um, and again, I don't, that's all I know. <laughs> but if that's true, uh, which it seems to be because a lot of smart people are talking about this, um, that's and I think that can be coordinated potentially through this decentralized sequencer layer or network, whatever that looks like. So like, I, I think this is going to be a hugely valuable piece of infrastructure, both from the value capture perspective, as well as the, you know, the service, like it's just gonna be very useful for people because it, it makes it so you can truly deploy a roll up out of the box. You don't have to think about any infrastructure, not even obviously not the data availability or consensus part, uh, but neither the actual like node, so, like running the, the node infrastructure for the roll up. So yeah, I'm glad that you brought this up because this is this is a big topic. Um, and and I, I, I would love to learn more about like, um, sort of the, the decentralized sequencer approach you guys have. Is there like, um, do you guys have any docs or like where can people learn about all these, um, like the technology that so, you guys are building, like the RDK, <clears throat> the, the settlement hub and all that? So first of all, there's GitHub, there's a few um, private repos, but there's GitHub open. Um, mm -hmm. There's uh, the docs, docs.dimension.xyz. There's a lot of learning material about Dimension and and uh, you can read over there. There's the light paper where we just go over through our whole design um, and how we see things and how like how it works and uh, try to try to be as simple as possible. It's not that hard to read. Um, and uh, yeah, it's like it's it's constantly right. You research is is trial and error. You 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 think you know, and then you okay, you get to the implementation, and things can change, right? Uh, but uh, I think that we're kind of in, in we reached kind of a mature uh, design in terms of the system, in terms of how everything works. Like I feel like we really kind of got the core fundamentals of everything, and there's there's some more work to do. But uh, yeah, we can we can talk about this more work because we're going on to test net in really really close. So. Uh, people could uh, see see this in, in action and, and experiment with this. Yeah, so um, I guess in in closing, I wanted to uh, I want to hear like what what is the roadmap? Like where where's development currently at? What is the roadmap for twenty twenty three? Like what what can people expect uh, this year? What can developers who are curious uh, play around with? Um, you know, where 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 do people go if they want to get involved? All that good stuff. So we we're not we didn't invent the the, the crypto uh, social mechanisms. You can come to Discord and you know there's questions. Whoever wants questions, we're we're, we're there. Uh, there's docs uh, that you can play around with. You can uh, run your own node, uh, your own dimension hub node, of course, and you can run your own roll app. Uh, basically, it means that you can uh, register your roll app on a dimension hub node and you can say to the dimension hub node hey i'm a dimension roll app i'm obeying to the protocol rules uh, this is the transaction please add me uh, to become a roll app on the dimension hub uh, you can put on that roll up an evm uh, virtual machine and put on contracts and see the latency see see how see how it works see the performance you can do the same thing with cosmosm you can build your own native go modules on the RDK, which basically means like you can build your own rollup with custom uh, uh, custom business logic. Um, in terms of the roadmap, so we're releasing testnet uh, in February. Um, it's going to be exciting. It's going to have uh, first permission rollups, and you're going to see like we're going to have a web app that you can see that you can move from rollup A to rollup B and, and see how it works and and kind of uh, have different flavors of rollups. So EVM um uh custom wasm like i said a native one uh see that uh working and then we're going to progress uh into incentivized testnet um there we're going to have permissionless deployment of roll apps uh we we plan to have like this thing where people could scout for fraudsters and and get 
you know, reward for this. And this is all on incentivized stuff. So it's super cool. So you can go ahead and try to try to create frauds, try to, uh, you know, try to tackle this uh, from, you know, the fraudster and try to tackle this from the people who want to catch uh, uh, the, the fraudulent stain machines. Um, some point uh, in mid 2023, we're going to launch testnet, eh, testnet, sorry, mainnet uh, Genesis event, and and it's going to be exciting. Uh, hopefully, it will it will combine with Celeste's mainnet, and uh, we're going to see a lot of rollups uh, submitting a lot of data to Celestia, and uh, getting a lot of liquidity from Dimension, um, and really like implementing the, the modular vision and just creating this alternate dimension of cosmos rollups uh and like i'm looking forward to it i'm just seeing it you know, coming into place each and each day that i come to work and work with like the amazing team that we have uh yeah super exciting well that is uh music to my ears um stoked to hear that you guys uh launch is sort of you know, in, in close tandem with ours. And, um, just as I, I, uh, the only, Hopefully. Tweet, I, no, fingers crossed, man. It's just, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I was saying that, yeah, fingers crossed also, I mean, in general, whenever you're shipping, um, you know, blockchain software, it is so difficult and complex and there can be so many bugs and things that go wrong. And so people <clears> need to understand that like that, that happens all the time. And so that's why even, you know, for Ethereum upgrading, uh, to prove a stake took so long. It's just a very, very delicate thing. But anyway, I was about to say that, um, you know, for me, 2023 is going to be the year of modular. It's going to be when modular stops becoming just like a buzzword and like, you know, uh, something that people talk about in theory, and it's going to become something that's actually real and out there in the world that people can build with. Obviously, still going to be early days for modular. There's still a lot of work ahead of us. Um, you know, a lot of the tech stack is still in development and, and going to take time to mature, but it's, it's going to be real and it's going to be, it's going to be like a new chapter for the entire blockchain space starting this year. And, you know, dimension is a huge part of that. So, you know, Ishe, Ishe, I'm just stoked that you were able to come on the podcast today and, um, you know, I'm excited for people to, to learn more about dimension and, um, you know, uh, I think that this is just the beginning of a much longer, uh, you know, partnership and conversation. And hopefully we can follow up sometime, maybe later in the year to, to hear how things are going. Maybe in Tel Aviv or Hawaii. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. But uh, yeah, once again, thank you for coming on and um, excited for the modular future to be building it together. Yeah, man. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it. And, uh, you know. Lots, to, lots to come uh, for building this this new, you know, this new internet. It is what it is. Absolutely. Well, thanks again. All right, man. Take care.